here on. Am I... Why do you not give me any warning? <laughs> if I could fire you, I would fire you. <laughs> morning. Uh, so we're doing the stocking this morning. And I... I don't have all my stuff cut. I am such a bad girl. It was a crappy morning and uh, <sighs> so we're going to fix it by sewing. So I did bring in, um, bring in, bring over, bring to my home this lovely. So, and I don't know if I told you, I actually made this while we were at a quilt show a couple of Septembers ago, actually, I think, um, when we could do quilt shows in uh, Barrie at the Fiber Festival. And the great thing about this was that uh, we had a lady, um, a wonderful vendor beside us, a, an online vendor, and she let me use her cutting table for the little bits that I did have to cut. But I had a package of uh, fat quarters and I cut them into strips and I actually got the stocking done, which is brilliant. Um, so, and I just wanna point out too, I just used a gold inside you could use whatever you want on the lining of this stocking. It's really not that important. Nobody, nobody but you is going to see it when it's hanging. The recipient might see it, but again, it's never really going to show. Um, and for the amount of time that it gets used, not really as important. And nobody's ever really going to see it that way. You're going to stuff it full of pretty things. So this was done with a blue and gold line that I absolutely adored. Anyway, so we have that little puppy. And um, I'm gonna put my glasses back on because I seem everything seems to be blurry this morning. And then um, this is your we hit now we have five or six of these left at the store. It's just this product is getting to be very hard to get in because of shipping issues and all of that. I know that they 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 have it made overseas and then um, it has to be brought from the States to here. And we did get the last, what, 12 packages of the tea towel that we're doing in a couple weeks. So the last and only ones that came into the supplier, we bought everything she had. It is one of my favorite things to do and to show and to suggest to people for a lovely gift for somebody um, when they're going. So um, I, again, plead the, I don't know, I don't get, I don't get to plead some kind of amendment, but I get to plead. I get to plead the fact that it's Christmas and it's crazy life right now. So I open up the package and um, you have two uh, printed pieces of, it's actually one and you cut it. So the batting is printed on. So you're just going to cut those apart. We're just going to work on one today. We are not going to complete this stocking today. I'm going to show you the basics so that you can get started so you don't feel so you feel like oh wow that is just as easy as aj said it was um and then you will see how easy it is to keep going um and how easy there's so many products in this line if you're interested make sure you get on there tag us say hi or whatever and um we can send you um the link to the june taylor um I'm saying I'm a lot this morning. The June Taylor, what are these? What are these? They're like batting kits because all the batting is printed on. So um, we have, like I said, we have a full line of them. There's bags, large bags, regular size bags. There's ma um, makeup bags. There's those really neat ones we showed on the Facebook Live the other day that have the vinyl, clear vinyl on the front of them for as a project bag. I'm actually really looking forward to making one of those. So the concept is basically the same for most of them. Um, uh, easy. That's the concept. All right. So the other thing I wanted to do was show you this ruler. Mine is getting very old and beat up. It's kind of hard to see. I'm just, I'll lay it here so the Deb can get a better look at it on here. Like so. So you'll notice that um, these slices in here or these openings are all half an inch apart. All right, and the purpose of this is to make your cutting go faster. Uh, I've cut a BQ quilt, which normally would have taken me about three to three and a half hours to cut my fabric. I've cut it in just over an hour using this ruler. Um, when I'm using all my 
scraps up at the end of a project like I've talked to you or talked to everybody about using everything up at the end don't throw it in a bin you'll never get to it again cut it into one and a half two two and a half inch strips three and a half and five inch squares if you do that put it in your drawers then you are able to quickly grab things um, good example is that the squares some of the squares that are required for this particular project and the only thing I have cut out for it are four and a half inch squares easy to take some of those fives and just trim your quarter inch off either all the way around or a half inch on two sides and get what you need just depending on if you want some of them fussy cap right um, so this ruler what it does then is bum, 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 bum. And this is why I love having my little apron on uh, we're going to cut and this is probably the least effective example because I don't have to cut a lot off so depth and shine down here I'm going to line my I'm gonna line this a line along the edge of the fabric hmm. I need to move over here we go I'm going to start on the zero line this isn't a ruler that really requires much of a lesson either I just want to point that out so I'm going to cut and trim off my end here like so and then I'm going to cut at the four and a half inches. I'm just going to move my ruler for a minute. I'm going to move this and I'm going to put this in my dog bed stash. Now I have two pieces of fabric there just so you know. And normally what I would be able to do, and this is why this is not as effective way to show you, there's my zero line so I've trimmed that off cut at my four and a half inches normally then oh wow look at that I am going to get two squares out of this this is sitting really literally right at nine so now I have cut two squares without moving anything without taking anything without picking up my ruler and I have my two squares cut so bam just like that oh I feel like emerald for a minute so okay so that is why that I love this ruler. It's not inexpensive. I don't keep a lot of them in the store. In fact, I don't even think I have one in right now. Marie comes to do all my cutting and she uses one all the time for our two and a half inch strips are all cut with this because your ruler isn't moving. I mean, it can move, but you, you it's a lot easier to be careful with it. Um, so if you want one, email me, message me. We'll get them in special order for you also get a price. I mean, years and years ago, they were $50. So I would imagine they're somewhere between 60 and 70 now. So, but they're, they're like gold. I use it all the time, like all the time. Okay. So I've cut some uh, four and a half inch squares because that was the measurement. I decided to take a little bit of a different tact with my stocking. In my mind, I thought I would make it for somebody who likes to knit instead of just doing it in Christmas fabrics. It becomes a themed stocking so I cut up some of the knit fabric I found this that I already had in my stash here finding fabrics in your stash is nice and feels good I think that one's not I think that one got left behind all right and I did not fussy cut I just cut because the pattern seemed to give me a little bit of what I wanted each time and then I thought it needed a little bit of red in there and we've thrown this in there so should be a little bit should be interesting we'll see how it goes um, and I'm just gonna read along the instructions with you so there are other sizes that you need to cut because as you can see you've got your your bottom bits here and your toe bits and your bits at the top and we would if you look at the instructions it does tell you that um, you need to do that and what sizes they give you a picture of the stocking and they give you numbers in each of those we okay well my living room oh look at I didn't know all you guys were saying good morning now we're walking back upstairs because I turned off my data and went or I turned off the Wi-Fi and went strictly with my data okay okay that's really, I think, what we have to do. Okay, so I'm reading my instructions, and um, it wants me to cut out the batting, leaving approximately a half inch to a one inch margin around all sides of my stocking. 
So we'll do that. Love these. I don't know what that bagging is. I, I feel like maybe one of my children buried somebody in a wall and they're just <laughs> bad. Like, I don't know what it is. Sometimes I feel it's the, the sound of me banging my head against the wall. This doesn't have to be exact. This isn't, this isn't a be super careful kind of thing. This is a get her done kind of thing, okay? Don't judge me for my cutting. Okay. All right, so we've trimmed. She hasn't relaxed because I didn't take her out of the package until like five minutes ago. Um, there we go. And then we're going to use quilt basting spray and we're going to attach attach or um, affix the this to the wrong side of my backing, okay? Which we have pressed. And so we're going to put it on this side, remember? So because this is quilt as you go, we're going to be done the quilting portion of this as we move along. I'm going to put it on my floor because that's what I do with everything. I'm gonna reach in, grab my spray. I'm gonna spray the back of my stocking. You are going to do this in the garage or the shed or with the door open down in the kitchen. Um, because quite honestly, you could get high doing this. And Or if you have asthma, get your hubby to do it. Start in the middle, really, really lightly. Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. All right, so. And there we have the next step done. Wasn't kidding. It really is easy. Okay, so we've done that. So, oh, this is what we're going to do, yes. Okay, so um, see, I've made the bag. I remember making the stocking, the stocking was two years ago. So with the printed batting side up, sew through the batting and backing fabric just to the inside of the stocking outline. Um, this is going to be used, so, I didn't think I needed to do this when I was at the show, but there's a reason for it. If you do it, then it, um, when we go later to cut it, it gives me the outline that I need uh, when I have that. So when I have it on here, right, has my cutting outline. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, I don't know what I have in there. I think it'll stand out my blue. So I've got a light blue. I'm not going to change my thread. I'm not going to match my thread. Um, and this is a, a learning thing because you want to kind of see it. It's going to be in a seam. It's going to be sewn into a seam, so you're never going to see it. But I want to see it when I go to do my cutting out. So that's kind of important. Do not take a picture of my ass. Ow. Oh, I didn't. Um, so remember, this is really just, it's like, uh, it's just to give you some, something to look at later. So we're going to just do it just, you don't have to do it. I wouldn't do it on the line cause we're going to cut on the line. Um, but, uh, I'm going to go over, where's that take me? Yeah. So I'm going to just use this foot and I've actually increased the length of my stitch. So it actually will stand out a little brighter for me and I'm just going to use this and this is just a quickie as well I'm probably yelling in their air now unfortunately we can't we're live so I oh
So I can see my outline. I had purple in the bottom. So uh, that's going to be easy for me to follow when I need to cut it. Okay. Okay. So next step. Ah. Okay. Pre-piecing for pieces 5 and 14. Sew four squares together into a strip. Okay, or pieces five. Oh, I see. Okay, so one, two, three. We're going to sew those pieces into our strip before we put them on here. Four squares together into a strip. We're going to do that twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just see. I was actually thinking that this guy should go here right? Because he looks kind of cool. So in my mind, I just started to do a little bit of layout. And um, I just thought that that is like the premium square, right? That's just the one that's going to be like right there. So I thought maybe he should go there. And then we should bring the theme together by doing him. So this is just a simple little bit of a layout that I'm doing, right? And I thought maybe if I put all of my fabrics this is um, so just just giving me an idea of what I think I would like to see. Right. So and then what will happen is we'll add the other pieces in after. So these three pieces need to be pieced together and then we're going to put them on here. And because there is a exact same stocking on the back and you don't have to do it the exact same on the back you would do this on the back as well you would do two pieces just like this two i don't know what that noise is freaking me out oh the lady's here okay all right so i'm just going to piece these quickly together again i'm not really concerned with my thread that's in here because i shouldn't be able to see piecing thread i'll just give it a sides together. And uh, any other time I would be doing the other one at the same time. So the other piece that I have to make that's, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. I would just be piecing three blocks together twice so that I'm not having to regurgitate my redo my steps and go back. I've got my iron on. I'm just going to give them a quick press. Okay. Trim your ends. So now I have the piece that's going to go in here. Oh, what does it want me to do? Place fabric piece one that is one right side up on the batting section marked one aligning the edges pin to hold in place pin only through the top layers of batting do not pin deeply through batting and backing okay i don't remember that part but whatever bit of glue in there so it's not liking me. I'm glad we're doing this one because the bag actually wasn't like this. Line up piece two on placement line. Well by the way I should learn to read things. It actually told me to sew four squares together for this. I don't know why. I'm going to learn why, but I don't know why. Ooh. 
line up piece two on placement line right sides together with piece one. Okay, so we're gonna put this off to the side because that's really, but I have it sitting here because I'm not sure, I can't remember, what did I have here? I think I was gonna put this guy here, right? Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna put here. So, this guy is going to go like this. Now it's coming back to me. Line up piece two on placement line, right sides together with piece one, pin to hold in place. So, on placement line. Okay, this is the thing. This is the thing that's important here. Okay, that one is the placement line there. Okay, there's a placement line, I did that right. Because it has little, see these dotted lines here. So this one also lines up here on the placement line. It's not like I don't have pins everywhere. Oh, Gloria, if you're on there, look at me pinning. I'm pinning. Okay, so I've done that. Pin to hold in place. So using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna flip my piece and smooth it over. And I'm going to finger press it and sew it in place. Okay, easy peasy. So using my quarter inch seam. I'm just gonna use my fix button there. And again, you wanna be doing the other stocking at the same time. Why? Because easier so much easier okay pins come out from that finger pressing so a light finger pressing and what's good is um, it'll allow you to make sure that you are keeping things along your lines and you're going to pin that in place okay make sense I hope it makes sense is there any questions or anybody asking questions on there right now okay all right um, continue to place pieces by number, um, always right sides together with previous pieces aligning with placement lines. If using directional prints, check your positioning. We've had that happen with that table runner. Um, sew your quarter inch slip open, smooth across the batting finger press and press and holes. So we're going to do both sides A and B of the stocking, which we're not going to do right now. Um, and so what I think we'll do is, because I think this is going to be my piece for here. So this is two. The next one that goes on here is three. And I'm only, I only laid this out because I want to see what I'm going to put, put here. This doesn't go like this. Hmm. Look what I did. <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's, that's why you're going to want to do this. And also... I didn't think about it because I wanted that there. So I think what I'll do is I'll take this end off. I love when I make mistakes for you guys on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I did that for you guys on purpose. So the next piece we're going to put on is this piece here. So the reason I keep holding this on here is because I wanted to see what I wanted to go on here. And I think I would put a little piece of my of my sheep next to them so they're evenly distributed right so and again placement is everything um so we're gonna put him this way so i'm gonna lie him on there like so find my pins so don't step on that pin down Bring it over here. And if you put your pins in far enough, you will not need to worry about taking them out when you're sewing and don't sew over them. Okay. Okay, removing my pins. This might be a lot easier too if you had everything set up on a little workstation right beside you it'd be a lot faster especially since 
we are only finger pressing. All right, so we're going to do this. Now, that because that was one, that was two, that was three, this is four, right? So we're gonna have to sew four on. And again, I go back to this piece that I'm gonna do like this. And what am I gonna do here? I think I need to do this guy down here. So this piece here could just be one of these little pale blue ones. So I think we'll do that. It's really hard with this Toscana fabric to see what side is up. So I'm gonna put that nice pale bit, or do you think the little piece of that, Deb? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And actually I'm gonna do it so it goes a different way. Um, so it's going to end up looking going this way, just because it's getting a little too mashy for my flavor. It's like a thing. Okay, give it a quick pin. Now remember when you go to sew this one, match your edges and you don't have to sew down the entire seam if you don't want to. So, you know what this is kind of like? It's kind of like crazy quilting. I didn't pin that properly. I think there is a dead body downstairs or partially alive one, maybe. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, I'm just gonna just bear with me. I'm gonna fake it with my machine here doesn't know that I know what it's doing. There's nothing wrong with my machine. It's running at a bobbin and it's trying to tell me and it won't let me use up the rest of it. And I'm just gonna sew out to the edge here. Okay, that should cover it. Silly bugger. There, now it's over. So, let me take these off and again, same thing. I'm just gonna smooth that down. And actually, I'm gonna leave that pin in and now, the only reason they want you to pin these out here is so that they kind of stay put when you go to do, um, when you go to do your next bit of sewing. They want you, like, and you don't have to worry about sewing all the way out because this is going to be cut in this shape. We just need to make sure that this part of the seam here that's on the stocking is sewed. So it's kind of like that we've kind of crazy quilted it, right? We've just added on, added on, added on till we filled the spot. And you can see why it's quilted as you go. All of the lines, I don't know if you can see that, Deb. There we go. So we'll go back and we'll trim these off. But that's also why you want to do, um, uh, use your little fix or a little ba tiny little back stitch if you can. Because we're just going to trim these tails. We're not going to leave them hanging inside because this will be inside your stocking. Right? We're going to trim those after. So, all right. And uh, AJ is going to... So our next step, because that was one two, three, and four. Now it wants us to do five. And remember five is now one strip. It had us sew together this one strip, correct? And this is why it had us sew a fourth square because of this wee tiny man over here, this little spot. So we will, and we need to do that because you can't sew on both sides. It just, it won't work. So we need to be able to have this be an entire row and then we're going to sew it to this, okay? And how did I want my row to go? It's gonna go like this, okay. So actually this is gonna work out in my favor. Who knew? What do we want down here? Kinda need the light one, don't we? You're giving very little input and you're so quiet today. <laughs> I'm just actually not really familiar with this. With this part of you it's because i showed into the phone oh right we had a paranoid about that yes your brother okay so i'm going to quickly sew that on oh that's what we let's do that i don't know if we told you that we don't professionally work in our sewing room also not like yogi bear
don't know if anybody else does this, but this thing is almost invisible. Also, why do I accumulate so much thread on my body? So I think on my one on the, the, the front or back or whatever, I'm going to do that slightly different. I'm going to. I'm gonna do that as my little, as these guys. I think it should have been this guy. You know what, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna do it later. This will be the one on the back. And then I need to make sure I press him. Okay. So I just wanna show you this piece and then I'm gonna show you up here and how we do this, because it's a different shape. But the um, thing that you can see clearly here and why there's four here is that this one is only attached at one spot. So we can add that after the fact. It doesn't have to be added on to the end of this. We can actually try and figure out what we would like to do after. It's just that it can't, it can't touch two sides. You can't sew two sides. You can only sew one at a time, basically. So then what we're going to do is we're going gonna to put this on here and I'm gonna pin in so I don't have to move my pins while I'm sewing I feel like they're doing gymnastics downstairs or something and you know what's really weird for a woman who has terrible freaking hearing these days? What I pick up when I am doing this with you guys, I always think, oh my gosh, is the video picking up that sound of craziness happening downstairs? I'm going to put this right at the end here. Okay, so I've, I've put this on and I'm going to sew right down this line. Also, remember, all I'm doing is just following those instructions. That's it, I don't have to start back too far. We're gonna hit our fix button. Just start at the end of the stocking. threads are starting to bother me. Okay, so we're gonna we take those off. And we're gonna finger press. All right, you don't wanna stretch it. You just wanna light finger pressing. And all I'm gonna do is just do this so it doesn't shift when I go to layer my next fiber cover. That's that's all. You just don't want to bubble. You just don't want it bubbling up. Okay, so you can see where it's going, right? And um, quite honestly, you could trim this off a little bit here, and then if you need this for a smaller piece, you can do that. So you'll see here with this number six, you could do this as one piece if you want. This can be one whole piece or you can sew the two pieces together to give you what you need. It's entirely up to you. But number six could is just really meant to be one piece. And um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking candy cane. And do I have a candy cane piece? Hell no. That would have been too freaking easy if I'd already had it. So I'm just gonna refer to this. It does say pieces one to six are four and a half inch squares. So I am just going to, I this fabric I can't get any more of it, so I'm being very hiney with it because I love it. It would make the best freaking binding. It's would make really just cool everything. 
and I can't get any more. This was one of the best sellers for fudge. You know the hardest thing about this video thing? Honestly, the hardest thing. Can you guess? No. You're not going to guess? No. Really? You're not even going to give it like a... Nope. Like a go? Nope. Mm. I can't swear. <laughs> That's the hardest thing. Like when we do our other stuff, your brother bleeps out my words. Quite honestly, this did not have to be an exact four and a half inch square. I could have just cut something. But I don't know if anybody's ever done uh, paper piecing. So we're going to, hmm. you know what we're going to do? I'm going to just trim this off right now. And I'm going to sew this to this. There we go. It's magical. I do want to match those seams up. I don't, I'm, I'm not truly freakish about too many things, but I think that's a thing. It's definitely a thing. So that's, you want to make sure when this comes out, it's going to cover everything. Correct. It will just, it was a little double check there. Match up my seam there. Okay, take it back. Again, you don't have to start right in, get a little fix. Watch your seam doesn't get turned. out. I'm going to have to start taking some of these pins back here. Finger press. Now, you can take these ones out now because this is all sewn down. Yeah? And we're going to put it instead in here. She's looking pretty slick. Mm, I didn't match my seam up very nicely there. Oh, well, I'm actually going to go back and fix this when y'all are looking and put that one in. Yep. Okay, so now what I do want to do. So I find that this glosses over um, the how you do this. It, it really does. Uh, and I, I don't like that it does that. But okay, so what I'm going to do, what I find the best way is give that a little finger press. I'm just, you know, I folded it on the line, so to speak. And, and well, actually, I'm going to give it a press press so I can cut it better. Both of them. Okay. It's funny. I, I always think to myself, I don't, I get that these are all patterns, super easy to follow. But as we're going through them sometimes with everybody, I see the little, where the questions would be. Right, there's questions. Well, how how did how was I supposed to know how to do this or whatever? And if you're just starting out, some things are more vague than they should be. I think that every pattern should be written with the assumption that you know nothing at all. I'm going to cut along my little ironed edge here as nicely as I can. Right now we have this line, I'm just on this line. So I don't know what I'm going to put on the top here. 
I don't know. Don't you think it should be them? I think it should be them too. So really the question is, where did them go? Okay. So, and also she's not much help right now. So I'm just getting a general nod. But the great thing too is you can just audition this. Right? So that's how she's going to look. Now, I will tell you something. Once you start making these and enjoying these, this is the basics, right? This is, this is, I mean, this is obvious now where you're going to go with this. It's obvious to me. I hope it's obvious to you. The general progression, fill in the blanks, color by number, sew by fabric. But I have really great red trim with baubles on it. It's really cool. And we have red rickrack at the store. And quite honestly, I would love some red rickrack on here. <laughs> la la. Um, and I don't know, do I want it sticking out or do I want to put this on and then I can put the red rickrack on top? Hmm, probably the red rickrack on top. But as I'm doing this, I can see where I can add things on. So it, remember, this is just a pattern. It's just a guideline, like stop signs and speed limits. <laughs> this is just a, the basics of what you can do. I took her bag thing and I ran with it. It has trim all over it. We use different handles. We use cool buttons. We made it as funky as hell. So that you could make it, where did my sample go? Like, um, ordinary, like this guy. We have a visitor. Hi buddy. We, um, you could make it ordinary like this guy, like this one. <laughs> um, I bet you'd fit in the stocking. Hi. Come on. Okay. Um, and that's very ordinary. You can use your fabric for your end fit, but they do suggest also you could use ribbon or rickrack for your end piece here. Uh, same idea. Now the top of this is bound. So you're putting this on just like regular binding, making a two and a half inch or a two and a quarter inch, whatever you're more comfortable with binding and doing that. And that's just a sit and, um, do later kind of thing. If everybody wants, I can do a quick finishing up video later that Deb can post. Actually, I can even get KB to film it. Mm -hmm. And um, and we can pop it on the YouTube if you wish. But it is a basic finishing. You're just sewing your right sides together and then putting a binding around the top when you're finished. Um, the binding tends to enclose that seam so that seam isn't sticking up at the top and that's kind of why it's nice to do a proper binding rather than um, binding each piece and then sewing it together again that's really bulky all right um, again I think what I want to do with this is I'm going to add that great bobble fabric to it so if I was going to if I, when I do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my bobble trim on now that's going to go along this line and then I'm going to place, mwah, I love you. Then I'm going to place this right side down. Remember, this is a large piece of fabric. I'm going to place it right side down and then it will, my bobble fabric will be nicely placed in here. It will be a little bit, a little bit more whimsical than it is right now. It seems awful serious for a knitting sheep thing. I think it needs to have something to, that makes it smile a little bit more. All right, so I'm not gonna do any more than this, uh, simply because we, we got you started, we've got you going, you've got the basics. Uh, everything from here is pretty pretty simple, all right? Um, you're gonna put on number seven, and then you're gonna put on number eight. You're just following the numbers, you're doing them in the order of the number. So number seven goes on with this lovely piece here, which I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna use this guy right here. That crackle should go there. And then this number eight would go on last. Um, remember, at the very beginning, it did show you how many pieces you were going to need. One piece is one through six, and ten through fifteen, you would need four and a half inch squares. Pieces seven and sixteen need to be eleven by three and a quarter. Pieces eight and seventeen, and so on and so forth. Okay, so it, it it's not leaving you hanging for that. The only thing it doesn't explain as well as I would like is what to do with this particular line because you have all this overlapping fabric. So use your iron, press it, and then give it a nice little trim so that you've got a straight edge there to work with. And um, 
you could, like I said, you can put in some trim if you want first and then put your piece, or you can actually sew them on at the same time, but some people it's less confusing. Tack the trim on with an eighth of an inch seam along here so that when you fold, put this on and lie it here and do your full quarter inch seam, everybody stays nice and tucked in and there's no extra seam showing, all right? Then at the end, you're going to flip it over and quite honestly, you, you de depends on if you've used a bulky trim or not in there. You can either cut this very carefully with your scissors, and I would just actually cut to the right of it rather than having all of that fabric come through or get loosened up. Or you could do another line. No, I would, I would just cut. I think what I did was I cut just slightly to the right of this um, because all of that's going to get included in my seam line. And I thought it would be easier when I sewed them together then nothing would um, bubble out, right? All right, so I want you to keep going. Hardest part about this is that I have to go into the store now. I can't stay and play and finish it, which is what I want to do. Because quite seriously, this would take me maybe 40 minutes to an hour, and I'm going to be finished these. And by these, I mean both sides and sewn together. So this stocking would be done in probably just under an hour now at this point. And again, I know I preach. It's not about the, it's not about the time. It's about the process. But if you are on a bit of a time crunch and you're trying to whip something up for somebody, um, then uh, you can see how quickly this is to, quick and easy this is to make. All right, so I'm wishing you all the best. Go hit your sewing room, go open the package. Don't forget to pre-cut your fabric. And uh, off you go, my little sewing ninjas.